YouTube Oz it going. The Goat House is back with the top 15 best undrafted free agency signings. A lot of steals out there. There's a big video we do at this time every single year. At Ivan Pace Jr. number one in this video last year. So I'm excited about this. Top 15, not just the top 10. I added five more here. This is based off best available plus fit plus chances of making the roster. Combine those things. Pumped out 15. Of course, there's some more signings going on. Over the next uh, few hours, few days, weeks. But number 15, going to go Cody Schrader, who is a star running back from Missouri. Going to the San Francisco 49ers. Just seems like a really good fit. It's a really good running back. Really good fit. Feels like a guy that that is a Niners running back. A Kyle Shanahan running back. Uh, and he's going to grind out some extra yards. Grind out first downs. He's just a ball player. You know, Doesn't have the ideal traits, I suppose. But again, just, just a ball player. So I can see him making that team. Uh, in contributing to the Niners at some point. We'll see. Number 14, going to go with Nelson Caesar from Houston going to the Seattle Seahawks, a team that could have used a pass rusher here to contribute on their team. And he was an explosive and productive one, super explosive. That's kind of what I look for at pass rushers. Do they explode off the box? It's really something you can't coach. And Caesar did that. You know, maybe he doesn't have the exact measurables, the ideal traits you look for. It's kind of a common thing with undrafted free agents, why they go undrafted, much like. Ivan Pace Jr. last year, but he's, you know these guys are just ball players. So um, I thought Caesar could have been could have went in possibly the fifth round. So a pretty good addition for Seattle here. Uh, number thirteen, Bo Braid, Maryland safety. Like him at strong safety, kind of a physical guy. Attacks downhill. Will, will hit you in the mouth. Uh, I, I thought he could have went fifth or sixth round as well. Really, yeah, could have could have went fifth. And the Ravens seem to be good with these kind of guys. Pretty good situation to go to with the, the DBs like Kyle Hamilton that they have and being able to learn from these guys. And the Ravens needed, badly needed some quality depth. And I, I think you get that in Brady. He was a little inconsistent, super flashy moment, and then maybe like a, a whiff or you know missed tackle. Could be a little better in coverage, but an exciting player. I think he fits in with Baltimore. Could make the team as some quality depth. Uh, number 12, going to go Steel Chambers, Steel Chambers, linebacker from Ohio State, uh, who... I think it's underrated. I, Tommy Eichenberg, the bigger name linebacker, and he was better in college, but something tells me Chambers actually could be better in the NFL. I could see it. I thought he could have went as high as the fifth round as well. Uh, Lions definitely could use some linebacker depth. It's a position where they could get better at in general because uh, they're really good everywhere else, it feels like. So it's a sneaky guy that maybe at times is a little underwhelming. You're left expecting a little bit more at Ohio State, but I think he kind of can hit that, what he's supposed to be or what he can be uh, in the NFL, especially with the Lions who are, no, what are they known for right now the last few years? Developing young talent. So I think it's a pretty good fit there. I like his chances to be solid. Number 11, going to go Gabe Hall. Gabe Hall, looks he looks the part. You know, he's a freaky big dude you know the ideal traits ridiculous length he's got some good athleticism to to him as well he hasn't fully put it together like those traits don't really play on the field quite yet would love more production um, it's a guy you want to coach though it's a guy that there's a lot more hidden in there uh, and, and he has the traits so the eagles usually pretty good with defensive linemen they, this probably would have been ranked a little bit higher but it's a, it's a tough team to make because how talented the Eagles are and they have a numbered defensive lineman. But, again, it's, it's a pretty good spot to go to and learn. But, again, they got so many studs up there. So, man, this one probably would have been – and it made the list because it's, it's a steal. It's a, it's a guy that could have went in the fifth round. It, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good, really good pickup, really good talent, especially undrafted. But, um, again, it would have been a little bit higher if, if his chances were a little bit better to make the roster. But, um if he makes it, you, you know something. You know they might have helped him hit his stride, stride or something, or try to. You, they see the, the the upside, and he's starting to work towards it. So that's one to keep an eye out on um, for. On the top ten, Bo Richter was my favorite deep sleeper in his class. I actually had a fifth round grade on him, but I figured he was going to go late or undrafted. And he was my favorite of those types of guys. wasn't talked about nearly enough. Why does he go undrafted? Two reasons. Uh, a bit of a tweener, like he played off-ball linebacker and edge, but he played both very well. I liked him at edge, uh, but also undersized because he probably is better at edge than linebacker, but when you play off the edge, you need length, and he, he has 30-inch arms. So 
definitely lacking length, which is pretty important. But, man, if you watch this guy during the season, this guy is a machine. That's the best way to explain him. A high-motor dude that is super productive, especially down the stretch in important games. Um, I liked him a lot. I talked about in a different video pre-draft. The comp I gave on him was a poor man's Andrew Van Ginkle, who the Vikings signed because Brian Flores is familiar with him, like kind of his type of player. So Richter got that comparison. Feels like a Brian Flores type player that you, they're going to use him at, off the edge and at linebacker. They're going to blitz him. You know, they're going to do everything with him. Um, so that's pretty funny. He ended up where I guess where his fit is, but who I compared him to as well is now is now there. So I liked Bro Richter, one of my favorite sleepers in this entire draft. I thought somebody might. Uh, be sneaky and take him, but didn't happen. Uh, number nine, Blake Watson, the running back from Memphis, who I liked, was actually the best available running back for me uh, after the draft ended, but I got a couple actually ranking higher on this list because it might be tough for him to make the team because the Broncos already had a pair of solid running backs, and they drafted stud running back from Notre Dame, Audrey Gastame. Um So Watson, it could be a little tough to make the team, uh, you know, so otherwise probably would have been ranked a, a lot higher, but he's so talented. He, he sees the hole. He's explosive after the hole. He can catch the ball. You know, Memphis running backs known for doing things like that. So, uh, this is a guy, another guy that could have went in the fifth round. So the, the Broncos Broncos had a really good day three. If you didn't watch our day three best picks video, uh, if you're a Broncos fan, if you haven't seen that, definitely go watch that. Um, they had a really good day and they continued it in undrafted free agency. A guy they got that didn't quite make the cut, Omar Brown from Nebraska, I thought was a sneaky good slot. Listed as safety, but it plays in the slot. Um, so they, they did over today in general. They did pretty good. So it's a really good running back here. Might be a little bit of a tough, tough task to make the roster because how many good running backs they have. Number eight, Dylan Johnson from Washington was, I mean, that's a, and he goes to the Tennessee Titans, and that was a high-powered offense passing attack, but he was a stud productive running back for Washington, even with all that those passing reps, and he dealt with an injury later later in the year, and he was grinding through it, and it felt like he wasn't 100 percent through the pre-draft process. So that's why he's a little different how you would grade him as an undrafted guy versus a draft pick, because if a guy has a you know dealing with an injury right now, you're not going to grade him as high as he is if you 100 percent because it's, you're putting a lot of risk making that pick. But once they're undrafted, it's like let's just go get the best players. There's no risk in this, so that kind of bumps his like his stock and his value up to me um, because you're not really worried about the risk of him being, you know, recently injured. Uh, but he's, he's tough. You know, he's physical. He'll bounce off tackles, um, home run plays for Washington, like crazy. He didn't time super fast, but I think he plays faster than that. But that, that is his knock. Doesn't, you know, isn't the fastest guy in the world, but the Titans have Tony Pollard, big addition, um, kind of a do it all back, could catch the ball very well, but pretty speedy. Uh, and then they have Ty J Spears, who's just pure speed, can catch the ball as well. They don't have Derrick Henry anymore. What are they missing? They're missing a power back. They're missing a phys physical back here, and they add that in Dylan Johnson, who was probably one of the better ones that could have got drafted uh, on day three and did not. So I like his chances to make the team as the running back three, kind of that flavor that they do not have out there fully. So I like that one a lot uh, for Tennessee. The more I'm talking about, the more I'm liking it too. Could have ranked it out earlier or higher, but there's some really good ones here. Fabian Lovett, we're not done talking about the Chiefs after this. We're going to talk about a few teams multiple times. Uh, Fabian Lovett, interesting prospect because this is a damn good nose tackle. This guy stops the run at a high level like a tank on the inside. Again, really stops the run at a high level. So that made you say... This guy should get drafted how good he stops the run. But, again, it's a passing league, and he didn't play a ton of snaps because Florida State would mainly use him on running down. So you have to take him off the field on passing down. So you don't love that, and that's probably that, that's not probably why. That's why he went undrafted. Um, it's because he's not going to be for everybody, and he's kind of limited to running downs. But he has a role, and that is something that's important. It's stopping the run, and he's polished doing that. So... Uh, and, you know, going and getting in an NFL program, especially the Chiefs with Chris Jones and that coaching staff, he can develop more more of a passing down role. So, um, and again, it's a stud run defender. So he's a beast. Um, so I, I, I like that one for the Chiefs there. I thought another guy that a lot of the guys we're talking about so far I thought could have went in the fifth round. Fifth round, I, I thought he could have went there. Not really a surprise he dropped because, again, a little limited the running downs, but he's so good 
in that category. Uh, and it, that is still very much important. Uh, number six, the Vikings again. I said we were going to mention multiple teams multiple times. Chiefs and Vikings were actually not done with. Um, Dwight McLaughlin, uh, who was a former LSU corner, went to Arkansas, and he had an incredible year for them. Big-time playmaker in zone coverage, and Brian Flores and the Vikings kind of moved towards more zone coverage than Flores ran the past this past year. They needed corner help. They did draft Kyrie Jackson, so you know we'll see. It might be a battle to make the team, but they needed corner help. There's nothing really set on that. Like Byron Murphy is like far and away the best corner on that roster, and, and you know they added Shaq Griffin. Um, you know, they got a couple other young guys, but nothing's really set there. Um, he had a really good year. He does a really good job reading the quarterback and jumping routes and making plays in the ball. He could be a little more consistent, kind of maybe just kind of going for I – mean, he kind of can get fooled by the quarterback, but sometimes he, that's how he makes his money. You know, that's how he makes the big plays. Um, you know, LSU could have really used him still if they had him this year. But, um, yeah, so I think that's a solid corner, That another one that I thought could have went in the fifth round. So – um, really solid corner for Minnesota there. Really surprised he didn't get drafted. Uh, number five, the Chiefs again. Curtis Jacobs uh, from Penn State. Super flashy linebacker. Yeah, he's not the most powerful linebacker. Wish he had a little bit more physicality, a little more size. Penn State would play him pretty wide for an outside linebacker at times. So I guess that's the issue. This feels like it could be a Willie Gay Jr. replacement, like how they used him. Uh, it's a flashy athletic linebacker. He, he's rangy, can get downhill. Um, he'll wrap you around around your ankles and, and bring you down, you know, so super athletic. Penn State, Penn State keeps pumping out these freak athletic linebackers, and they end up being something. And the Chiefs are kind of good with, like, the non-big name linebackers. I know Nick Bolton's a big name now. But they kind of made him into that, and he made himself into that. But they're kind of good with these types of guys, and they definitely need a depth pretty badly. Um, so I think he makes the team, and I think, again, this is kind of like a Chiefs guy that could that can work out. Again, could he be like a Willie Gay type player? The more the more I'm talking about this guy, I want to move him up more, too. I did the same thing with Dylan Johnson and the Titans. So we got a lot of good ones here that just make so much sense as fits and chances to make the roster. Uh, I, thought he could, I thought he could have went in the fourth or fifth round um, but not super shocking. He didn't go that early. Well, you know, it's a little shocking. He didn't go at all, but that early because, uh, yeah, a little undersized, I suppose, um, could add more physicality, but a freak athlete. Number four, the chiefs third one for the chiefs, Amani Bailey. I love the Amani Bailey. I, I mean, if you watch TCU, you probably love them as well because he was explosive. He was hitting home runs like crazy. He was breaking tackles like crazy. He was so elusive. The contact balance was there. I thought people were sleeping on him. Um, another guy I thought could have went in the fifth. Um, you know, I, so I, there's a guy that I just really liked and a guy that is really good value, you know, especially undrafted. But I love the fit. Again, the Chiefs are good. With, look at Isaiah Pacheco. I mean, what that guy was at Rutgers, he was just a physical dude that was super high motor, that loved the game of football. And I think Bailey is a lot of that. Um, and, and Pacheco was a late-round guy. Bailey was uh, supposed to be a late-round guy. Ends up going undrafted. And they don't have a long list of running backs. They bring Clyde Edwards-Alaire back, but doesn't mean they're set with their running, you know, their backup running backs. I can see Bailey making that team and being a factor, especially you know into the future because running backs don't last forever. So... Uh, and the way Pacheco plays, you know, I'm not doubting that guy. I love that guy, but um, you know they might need a starter, and you know I, I don't think that soon. But th this could be a guy that I, I think he goes undrafted because he's short. He's really short, and he's not super speedy. He hits some home runs though, but the guy can play. He sees the hole, hits it, breaks tackles. He's gone, you know. So I I, I love Monty Bailey's game. That's one of those sleeper running backs that. Can tell right away if running backs can play or not. It sure looked like he can play. TCU has been having some pretty good running backs too. Uh, number three, gonna go Leonard Taylor the third from Miami going to the New York Jets. Uh, really good player, really good value as an undrafted free agent. Really good fit for him to kind of hit that stride and develop uh, under Robert Sala and Jeff Olbrick, uh, who can coach defensive linemen. They traded. Um, John Franklin Myers today as well. Not that they're that similar a player, but I think Taylor could kind of actually develop in being in that guy. Uh, Miami played him out of position. They they played him in the A gap a lot, and he was okay there. But it's a B gap player, and if he's not a B gap player, I mean, if he's not like a D tackle, 
you know, I, I, you know, we're, would I have rather play him a step outside or over the nose? I would think I would rather go on the outside. And Miami was kind of playing him in the A gap a ton, like I said. So I think he was out of position. He was more in position two years ago. And early mocks had him first or second round. I was kind of more thinking second back then is a long term future projection. But, um, so the talent's there. The upside's there. He's a freaky dude, has really flashy plays. He looks the part as well. Um, and it's a good, staff and a good defense and a good place for him to go to to get a chance and learn uh and, and be that guy so um r- really talented too for, for an undrafted guy so love that for the Jets number two gotta go with an offensive lineman here Drake Nugent from the national champion uh Michigan Wolverines uh, who played center for them wouldn't put him past to put a pass and play guard the Niners could use either but man they, they, again they could use either center or guard I they're going to be a competition for those spots. I can see Nugent being the best center on their team. I, I, it's bold, but I, I really could. I thought he could have went in the fourth round. Um, you know, I know center's not the sexiest position in the world, and some teams believe in drafting him really late, or maybe not at all, because you just find a guy that can snap the ball and stay in front. I think it's a little more complicated than that. But uh, I, there's a good one here from a really good offensive line that. It was probably the best in college football. It was the best team this year. They won the national championship, but the best offense line in college football probably was um, very consistent. So something the Niners needed. Uh, again, really good value. I think he could have been a fourth-round pick. People were mixed on him. It was like anywhere from fourth to seventh maybe, but uh, I like it. I, again, I think he can be a, a starter in the, sometime in the near future. Uh, for the San Francisco 49ers, if it's not week one, I think sometime in the near future, so we'll see. And then number one, uh, you know, I said it last year in this video. It was crazy, too, if you follow us on Twitter. But, all right, first off, last year in this video, we had Ivan Pace Jr. Couldn't believe he wasn't drafted. He was such a productive, big-time player in college, and he goes to a perfect fit. Undersized guy is the reason he went undrafted. Goes to the Vikings. And we had that number one in last year's video. So I tweeted when Gabriel Murphy went undrafted. I'm like, this reminds me of Ivan Pace Jr. Not the same position, but just such a game record guy that is undersized and that went undrafted. Mainly he's undersized because of length, um, but went undrafted because of that. And then he ends up with the Vikings. I, you know, So he signs with them. This guy, I think, could have went as high as the second round. Uh, I, I thought most likely he would go third or fourth, and he just kept dropping, but... Teams just really take that size thing seriously. Like he, he for for an edge rusher, he is severely lacking length, thirty inch arms. So that it's very important. But this guy constantly got in the backfield, and he is more than an edge rusher. But we'll talk about that in a second. But he was constantly in the backfield. A perfect world, he could have finished some plays back there, but he disrupted a ton of plays. He's a freak athlete. Showed it on the field how explosive he is getting back there at the combine. He showed it as well. Um, but I loved how UCLA used him. And maybe some teams had a problem with that because a lot of his production came from being in unique situations, uh, you know, and moved around a bit. And maybe teams didn't really have a plan for that. You know, maybe you, you're looking at him, you go like, yeah, pretty explosive, pretty athletic, but you have to use him this way. We don't really want to do that. We don't, we have a guy that does that. So that could be another reason as well, but he's an edge rusher. He would stand up, put his hand in the dirt. He would stand up o- o- over guards, um, you know, in between guards and tackles, uh, like they would line them up everywhere. I said it during the the pre-draft process. It's kind, it, it's a poor man's version, and he's a lot smaller. But kind of how Arden Key has been being used, I, mainly when he was how he was used with Jacksonville. Um, but I guess you know Minnesota used Zedaria Smith that way. Um, uh, you know, so some guys like that that, that you know how they're you they're edge rushers, but they'll randomly line them up somewhere else. And it's actually considered a blitz where they're coming from. Um, so, by far, the best available player in undrafted free agency for me. I was probably a little higher on him than most. But I feel like most people had him third round, at least the fourth round. Uh, I thought he could have been a late second round guy, even though I wasn't really counting on it. Um, but just by so much he can do is, is why I liked him. But on top of all that, again, another really good fit of Brian Flores, like using those unique pass rushers those versatile pieces but now they got quite a few of them um you know because they signed Andrew Van Ginkle they now they signed uh, in free agency but now they signed an undrafted free agent Gabriel Murphy and Bo Richter who I compared to Andrew Van Ginkle 
Uh, but really, I, the Vikings don't have a long list of edge rushers. And, uh, you know, even though they're both versatile, I wouldn't really compare Murphy and Richter. Um, you know, they both can play edge. Their other position, Murphy's just still a pass rusher lining up in different spots. Richter can actually play off the ball, so he could actually make the roster doing that. Um, just really good Brian Flores fits. Uh, but Murphy was going to be... You know, a lot of this was based off fits, and Murphy was a good fit with Minnesota, but he was going to be no, number one even if he went somewhere I don't think he fit because he was just that that much far and away like the best available player to me. So uh, some good ones here. There was some. There's some other good ones. There's some that are still happening. Um, a guy that I liked. I didn't. By the time we're you know recording this, uh, Marcus Roseme Jack Saint. Uh, I didn't from Georgia. I didn't see him sign anywhere. Like he's a little underrated because he's not the fastest guy, but it's a Georgia receiver that can play. He's consistent. I think he had zero drops this year. So great hands. Um, by the time we're recording this. He did not sign, so that's one. I don't know if he would have made quite me. He would have on the fringe of making this, um, but that was a sneaky one too, off the top of my head. Uh, you know, some safeties out there that were pretty good. More running backs. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at at it, see if there's more signings. Uh, there's some really sle- sneaky, deep, deep sleepers I like. So I kind of want to talk about those guys where they go if they sign somewhere. Follow us on Twitter for all this talk. Uh, but go to our channel, check out our recent videos covering each day of the NFL draft. You will not be disappointed in it. We're going to start ranking, grading drafts. I got to get to a 2025 way too early mock. I always do that as well. Um, We'll start predicting the NFL season uh, in the near future as well. So going to do some college football content, maybe kind of get us ready for next year's draft already too. That'd be fun. So things to look forward to in the summer. Uh, But that will do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on undrafted free agents, but that'll do it. Goodbye.